Hi everyone and welcome back to the Waterhouse Ford. So yesterday we removed the axles from the TD20 and today, or rather when we were doing that, uh, we needed to drain the oil out of the back end of the tractor. And one of the things I noticed was a lot of gunk came out with the oil, literally clumps of muck. Now I haven't actually gone through the oil to try and determine what it is. But what it has told me is that we need to open up this back end. Um, probably not entirely, but just uh, enough to be able to clean out the muck that's probably sitting at the bottom of uh, the, 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 the rear end, the transmission, um, the diff, etc. So the next job is to move these axle stands that are currently holding the trumpet housings. We're going to move, need to move those so that the the centre of the tractor is supported. We're going to remove the trumpet housings on both sides. We're then going to remove these two plates on the side. Uh, on the other side is where the PTO gauging lever is and on this side is where the dipstick is. And depending on how we go with that, we, that may be enough. If it's not, then we'll have to remove the top of the, essentially the hydraulics um, cover. With, it sits above the hydraulic pump. We're also going to remove the uh, hydraulics quadrant because that needs to be restored. The, there's a, a, a cork gasket that probably needs to be replaced in here. But anyway, this is going to be uh, this will need to be restored because it's in, in pretty bad shape. Uh, we may even uh, land up having to replace components of it because it's very badly. It's obviously been uh, badly rusted at some point in its life. Obviously now it's been, it's been coated uh, with a base coat of paint, but it's just not as smooth as, as I'd like it to be. Subject to what we find when we, t when we dismantle it, when we take it apart, we may or may not land up either looking for a better used uh, a quadrant, a quadrant which is, which, is, which is used but is in better condition, uh, otherwise, I know that um, I believe that these are available uh, to purchase essentially uh, as aftermarket, but new. So we're going to start today with removing the trumpet housings. Uh, that's probably about as far as we'll get today, at least to um, take them off and uh, inspect them. That'll also give us opportunity to inspect the crown gear. I'm not expecting any major problems with the crown gear, but obviously it not going to hurt. Whilst it seems we've come this far, it's not going to hurt to, uh, to take a good look. But nevertheless, it will allow us opportunity basically to clean out uh, the, the bottom of this back end. Okay, so <clears throat> let's see how we go. Okay everyone, so what we've done, we've moved the axle stands to underneath the, the tractor itself, the transmission housing freeing up the trumpet housing so they can come off now separately. So we're going to move now to loosening these bolts all around the perimeter. If I can show you these bolts here. We'll get all of those out and that should allow the trumpet housing to, to come off uh, quite easily, hopefully. actually it's a completely different size and it's a, it's a bolt rather than a nut. Looking at the other side it's a nut so if somebody's done some sort of repair job there. About five eighths nut. This is a 17 which is a metric size. That seems to almost fit. Now, there you go. So, somebody's put a 17 bolt in there for some reason. So, what we'll do, we'll run that one out quickly. It's also got a strange washer on it. Don't know if you can see this, but uh, it's got like a plate on. It may have been to hold something on at some point, maybe somebody mounted something on there and it's actually broken off because that's got a rough edge there. 
But anyway, we'll check that out. Might be that we uh, replace it with a stud again. Weirdly, this one here is very, it's a very thin nut, much thinner than the others, much narrower. Again, let me show you. Where am I? See that? And that's the, uh, the original. So literally, almost about half as thick as it should be, which is uh, interesting. So I would say somebody's definitely been in here at some point. So we'll see what we see. Okay. That's all of them except these two. So we'll just uh, remove that one. This one's still tight. Okay, and it's starting to come. So it'll just support its weight. Take that nut off. And of course the stud is coming out. Oh well, right. Let's move this out of the way. And I see if I can do this without maiming myself. Oh, there's another nut here, sorry. Alright, here we go. Supporting its whole weight, and off she comes. And there you are. Okay. Okay, so first thing. We can see the, uh, the nut there, which holds the uh, the pin that the hydraulic arm rides on. That's looking nice and tight. It's got a castellated nut. It's got a um, split pin through it, and that looks good. I'm going to leave that because there's absolutely no reason to uh, to replace it. Sometimes they might work themselves loose, and and then you find those pins. You can't tighten them on the outside. The only way to get to them is to remove this bell housing, uh, sorry, this trumpet housing and tighten it back up. But there's no reason to replace them, they're in good condition and that's looking really nice and tight. Second thing, we've got this Welsh plug over here which is basically capping off where the brake shaft runs. There's, on the other side of that there's a bush and the brake shaft sits inside there. Again, the Welsh plug looks really good and I think I'm going to leave that, but we'll definitely be replacing the bush on the other side. Depending how we go, when we replace the bush, you may find it quicker and easier to uh, to remove the Welsh plug in order to knock the bush out. If that's the case, then obviously we'll replace it quick and easy to do, and they're really cheap as well, so no issue with that. But the most important thing is this race for the bearing. Now, just cleaning that up a bit, that is in pretty good condition. There's a couple of very minor pit marks on it, but nothing more or nothing sort of concerning or too concerning to the point that I would want to replace it. So I think that is going to stay as is. I'm happy with that. Subject to, we'll check the rollers in a minute. And uh, obviously if the rollers are not so good, then we'll replace the whole lot. But otherwise, I'm happy with that. This gasket is uh, 
okay. I mean, it's, it's obviously been sealing, which is good, but obviously that'll have to be replaced now that we've removed the trumpet housing. So we'll get that cleaned up and get a new gasket before this goes back. Other than that, nothing, nothing else to say on the actual trumpet housing. Okay, so first thing, looking inside here, we can see a lot of gunk. This is the gunk I'm talking about. And in fact, I've got my fingers in there and I can feel bits of metal, which is really not good. So that'll definitely have to be cleaned out, flushed completely as best we can, and uh, try and get some of that get some of that crap out of there. Moving to the bearing. Look, it feels fine. There's no... All the rollers are free. Got a little bit of yeah, got a bit of pitting on on some of them. Okay. All right. So I think that bearing is going to need to be replaced. Unfortunately, there's uh, quite serious pitting on the rollers. You can see. Hopefully, the camera is picking it up. But that's um, while we're here. While we've got it open, we might as well replace it. Look, it's probably going to be fine for, you know, it'll probably be good for a number of years still. But seeing as we're here, we've got it open, we're going to have to replace the gasket anyway. We might as well replace these bearings. So we'll get those off, we'll get new ones ordered, get those off, and uh, get those replaced. Looking at what I can see of the crown gear so far, look, at it, it looks good. Um, no major chips or anything on the gears and you wouldn't really expect that to be honest these things are pretty sturdy yeah and from what I can see so far all looks good all right so we'll move to the other side now I'm not going to film that we we'll get the other side off and uh, when I've got that off we'll um, we'll bring you back and have a look at uh, removing the crown gear itself. Okay, so we've got the other side off, the other trumpet housing. And looking at this bearing, we've got pretty much the same condition as the other side. It's um, very pitted on the wheels. The camera won't pick it up, I'm afraid. But um, yeah, so same, same story. Now, the next stop, the next step, I believe, is to pull this crown gear out. And as I understand, it should just pull straight out from this side. So we're going to give it a go and uh, see how see how we get on. I, looking at it, it is a big chunk of metal, and uh, I'm expecting it to be quite heavy. So um, hopefully, I won't damage anything, uh, body parts or otherwise. Okay, so here we go. See if I can get a good grip on it. Okay, seems to be hanging up on something. Out. So I'm going to put it down here on this cardboard and then I'll bring you over. Okay, let's take a closer look inside. So we can see, let me zoom in for you. That's your main drive there, it engages with that big uh, crown wheel. And again, Looking at it, it's, I mean, that those splines feel beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And that bearing, 
I'll need to check that out properly, but it looks good because looks can be deceiving, but I'm, ex I'm not expecting there to be any issue with that. Coming over, obviously you see the uh, PTO drive shaft there, and in the bottom there, just the worst possible muck you can imagine. Horrible, horrible, horrible. But to be honest, not unexpected. It's, uh, if you can imagine, there's obviously a lot of gears turning and turning inside of there. Um, it's not, you know, it's not working very fast, but over the years, you can imagine a little bit of shaving, metal shavings come off. I would say that that has probably never been cleaned out properly, and many tractors probably never have. You know, so this one's getting a bit of love. And there we've got the crown gear itself. Let me zoom in a bit. Uh, I'll check that out probably in the next uh, in the next video. I'm not intending to dismantle it. Um, I, I don't see any reason to. I intend just to replace those bearings and then put it all back together again once everything's been properly cleaned up. Okay, well I think that's probably it for this video and for today. I hope that uh, there's been something of interest in here for you. More importantly, obviously, stay tuned, subscribe, and uh, give us your comments down below. And uh, yeah, as you can see, we're, we're cracking on. Tractor looks uh, quite different, but it won't be long now. We'll get the back end put back together properly and get that all finished, and we'll move on to other parts of the tractor. The only bit that I really want to get into now is the hydraulics, uh, the pump, see if I can determine uh, whether that needs further work or not. Unfortunately, I don't know the state of the hydraulics on this tractor because, of course, the tractor wasn't working when, when we acquired it. So that sort of leads me to, we'll probably want to open it up and, and, uh, and check, it out any, check it out anyway. But anyway, that's where we are for now. Um, look forward to seeing you on the next video. Cheers for now.